Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heart Rhythm Society 2024 annual sessions. My name is DJ Lakaredi. I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist from the Kansas City Heart Rhythm Institute. And I have the distinct pleasure of talking to one of the upcoming key opinion leaders in the left atrial appendage space, Dr. Akash Makar, who's going to join us today from Phoenix, Arizona. Dr. Makar is a, an electrophysiologist from the Arizona Heart Arrhythmia Associates. Akash? Thank you for having me. I, 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 I see this uh, abstract that you have presented at HRS this year uh, called the Emerge LAA. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what this study is about, what are the study endpoints, and how many patients have you studied? So what's the purpose of this particular um, abstract that you have presented at? So uh, the purpose of this study was that we have this Emerge LAA post-approval um, data collection, and uh, there are patients who have complex left atrial appendage anatomies. And in those patients, um, the watchman, which has a single, uh, you know, a single seal um, closure mechanism, that is not able to completely occlude the appendage, and we have those failed patients, and what to do about those. So this data actually provides the insight into those patients who had a failed attempt with a single closure de design device like Watchman, and we attempted amulet implant in those patients, and uh, we analyzed the data, and we studied over 8,500 patients, um, Around 8,300 of those patients had uh, index LAO procedure, means they never had any prior LAO attempt. However, there were 244 patients who had prior failed LAO attempt with Watchman device. And we attempted um, amulet in those patients, so we analyzed the data to see what is the success in these complex uh, anatomy patients. So, um, can you tell us what some of these baseline anatomic or clinical characteristics were that made these patients eligible for this single lobe occluder type of devices that the implanters have failed to implant? So, um, you know, as we know from prior data, when you have complex anatomy, you know, very wide orifice, shallow depth, multiple lobes, a uh, lot of trabeculations, vertical chicken wings, uh, the single uh, device mechanism fails. So we, in this analysis, we found that comparing to the index group who had no prior attempt versus the failed ones, they were more complex. They had more incidence of heart failure, more bleeding events, and actually the average LAA diameter was higher in such patients. And so that's why these subset of patients were way more complex than the index LAO patients. In your opinion, um, what do you think is the advantage of a dual seal closure mechanism device like an amulet compared to a, a single mechanism closure device like a Watchman Flex or so? So, uh, you know, Watchman Flex or similar design devices have like a single, uh, you know, uh, closure mechanism. So if you have a multiple lobes, it's not able to cover the other lobes. Or if you have too much trabeculation, you put the device on one side and the other side is uncovered. And because of that, it's not able to close in most of those patients. So the advantage of the dual mechanism is that there's a disc attached to it. So whatever the lobe is not able to cover, the disc is able to cover. So in those very, very complex anatomy patients, uh, it's very beneficial to have this. Also, if you have a very shallow appendage, it's very helpful because it doesn't require a lot of depth with this type of device. I see. So what were the outcomes of your uh, study? Like what percentage of these patients that couldn't be closed with that one particular device were you able to close with the amulet device? And what kind of nuances, what, 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 what were the practical issues in really closing off some of these type of devices? Because I assume any of these patients that have complex anatomies are probably complex for both type of devices. So how do you really navigate or overcome those anatomic limitations with the amulet device? So um, the results of the study, so we, were, we had 244 patients. Uh, out of them, at, we analyzed the data at the procedure at the discharge and at 45 days. And what we found was 
that acute closure in this complex subset was possible with amulet in 88.9%, almost close to 90% of these patients were able to be closed with amulet device. And when we analyzed the data at 45 days, um, we found that 90% of those patients had less than three millimeter post device leak, which is cl clinically relevant based on the recent studies. And so, again, this was very helpful because it's a very complex set of patients. Now, in fact, the safety also was much more, uh, you know, it was only 1.6% um, uh, chance of complication, the safety net outcome compared to the index LAO patients. And in the in index LAO patients, the complication rate was around 0.8%. So it was slightly higher than that, but still much lower considering the complex set of patients we had. Were there any issues with uh, device embolization or device migration? I mean, not knowing that these are complex anatomies and difficult anatomies. So the device embolization was High, slightly higher in this group. It was at 1.2%, so there were two or three patients out of 244 where device was embolized. And we actually looked at those um, anatomies. Actually, those anatomies were not even suitable for amulet, so we were testing the device beyond its capability. But still, the, the rate was around 1%, which is, again, much lower considering the type of patients we had. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think are the alternatives for these patients who you can't close even with an amulet? How did you manage those patients? Well, at this point, uh, those patients are being managed, you know, with the blood thinners, and, and we're looking into future that we have uh, newer, uh, newer type of devices uh, come in the market. A lot of them are in research trials. Once they get approved, we may have an option for those patients in future. So let me ask you a question. I mean, you, you implant a lot of these devices. You are one of the high volume referral centers in Arizona. So uh, in your practice, how do you manage um, LA closure? Like, are you, tell us a little bit about your patient selection, device selection. How do you decide you're gonna put in a single lobe closure mechanism devices or a dual closure mechanism devices? And do you make the decisions upfront or do you make the decisions in the lab? What's your workflow? So it depends, you know, sometimes, you know, many of these patients are referred for ablation as well. So we have sometimes pre-imaging available because we had done T's on them in the past. And if I see a patient with a very shallow appendage, appendage with multiple lobes, there's a lot of trabeculations or, uh, you know, a vertical chicken wing, in those cases, I already know, we presented last year at HRS that those type of anatomies are so not suitable with a single closure me mechanism. For sure, on those patients, uh, I use a dual mechanism to start with. But sometimes we decided on the table when the patient came for an appendage occlusion and uh, uh, the patient is undergoing a pre-op, uh, you know, on the intra-op imaging. And at that time, uh, if we see if it's a you know, straightforward appendage, then we can use either device, depends upon uh, which rep is available at that time. But if I see any, any complex anatomy, or if the patient was referred to me after a failed attempt by somebody else, then definitely, I'm, if I'm going to attempt in those, I look at those pictures, and if I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with the dual mechanism because I don't wanna repeat the same thing all over again. I mean, I know a vast majority of the appendageal anatomy is maybe in the order of 65, 70 percent, you can close with any type of device. Mm -hmm. And then you have this other 30, 35 percent of patients who have a little bit of complexity, maybe one versus the other. Mm -hmm. So what's your workhorse device and which one do you go for as your first choice and how do you come to that decision? So the thing is, my workhorse device is the dual uh, amulet uh, device because uh, I did a lot of Watchmen, 2.5 Watchmen Flex, and then Amulet came out. And what I started realizing was uh, that there are a lot of times a single uh, closure mechanism fails, and then uh, you have to bring the patient back because the other uh, company device is not available. Or even if they're available, you open, you open initially Watchmen, and then you open Amulet, and then uh, the hospital got charged by two device companies. And so economically, it was not feasible. So I decided, if I'm going to use in complex anatomies, why not use in simple anatomies? And we have an excellent uh, result uh, on those patients. So okay. that's why we started doing it. 
So uh, there are the rumblings and the concerns about a higher complication rate and higher pericardial effusions and other type of complications with the AMOLED device. What has been your experience and, and how did you really get over that initial learning uh, hurdles that you have mm -hmm. to really get to where you got to today? So yes, there, has, there have been rumblings about more pericardial effusion or pulmonary artery injury. Uh, and so what only thing I look if there is a cuddling PA anatomy because of the left atrial and um, pulmonary artery are in proximation throughout. In those very subselect of patients, I will see if I can fit uh, in a watchman device compared to amulet. But otherwise, uh, when we started off, I had a pericardial effusion rate of al almost 2%. But, you know, with as with operator experience, uh, things went by and we started fi finding that my own pericardial effusion rate is less than 1%. But none of my patients have gone for open heart surgery. An interesting thing in this, we found that uh, the index LAO procedure was done with uh, more devices were implanted by uh, have you know more experienced operators so the but in the failed LAO group the most of the devices were done by relatively low experience low or moderate experience operators and we looked into the details why that happened and the interesting part was that these uh, physicians who had low experience they were practicing practicing in centers who had industry commitment from Boston Scientific for 90%. So they reserved the amulet for uh, failed cases only. And despite majority of the cases were done by relatively lower experienced operators, we still have an excellent safety outcome. And the pericardial effusion rate was a little bit higher at 2.5% in this group by those operators. However, uh, with the more experienced operator, the pericardial effusion rate was almost one and a half percent only. So it looks like you, you sort of figured out your workflow, understand the anatomy better, plan it better, and then you can essentially get excellent outcomes, and especially in those complicated anatomic situations, um, looks like the dual closure mechanism amulet device seems to be superior. Yes. All right, congratulations sure. on the study. Thank you so much.